Well, hello and welcome to episode 127 of Drink the Movies. I'm Brian here as always with Michaela. And Michaela, for three years now, we have been celebrating May the 4th with a Star Wars spectacular. Uh, Of course, we started with A New Hope, 1977's uh, Star Wars classic that changed cinema forever. We did Empire Strikes Back last year with uh, three cocktails representing the uh, the terra firma of that uh, that darker second uh, installment of Star Wars. But today we're we're back. We are happy. We are celebrating with the Ewoks. We are good to go. We're going to bring uh, justice and peace to the galaxy. We're talking Return of the Jedi. May the 4th, Michaela. May the 4th. And may the 4th be with all of you, always. Uh, I, this is probably, gosh, one of my favorite weeks. It's like Christmas in May. I, I, I can't really describe it. Everywhere, everywhere we're looking. And I don't know why this week, this May the 4th, is like a whole season to a lot of places like Lego has a bunch of stuff out. Um, We've not been paid to say that, but it's, it's kind of a thing. Um, You know, all the movie theaters have all the things because return of the Jedi turned 40 this year. And they picked this week of all weeks to have their 40th anniversary uh, parties where you can go and watch it on the big screen, which we haven't been able to do in like 20 years. So that's really exciting. Um, Gosh, everywhere I turn, um, TikTok is full of May the 4th stuff. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. So uh, I'm glad that they all decided to join our party because we've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm, We did mm -hmm. it first. And um, yeah, uh, it's very exciting because Return of the Jedi is arguably everyone's favorite. Everybody except my husband. Um, Everybody loves this film uh, uh, best out of the trilogy. Maybe not everyone. Um, That's definitely a debate for another day. But um, it's got the Ewoks in it, which means it's got Endor in it, which means we have some fun. Uh, we got a fun cocktail to do that's going to be representative of all the things. Yub Nubby, it's going to be great. That's right. It is going to be uh, Yub Nubby for sure. And yeah, we're uh, definitely going to be going to celebrate with those Ewoks with a special cocktail uh, that we whipped up from Oga's Cantina down at Galaxy's Edge. So why don't we do this, Michaela? Let's take a quick break. We will go grab our speeder bikes. We will head down to Florida and we will uh, try our hand at recreating one of the fancy uh, Star Wars themed cocktail uh, drinks we got there. So let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. So this week we're celebrating on the forest moon of Endor which is my favorite planet uh, in the Star Wars universe because, of course, it has the Ewoks, which are basically like uh, Care Bears that have gone awry and they're cute and they're little and they're fuzzy. They might kill and eat you. They might kill and eat you. you. Um, Which begs the question, okay? Well, we'll talk about it. We'll We'll, talk about about that. We'll talk about it. We have defeated the Emperor. We've destroyed the second Death Star and we've ridden on some really cool speeder bikes. Uh, that I did not pay nearly enough attention to until we did a screening of this show uh, just for the podcast. Um, yub nub, man. I'm so excited. Um, and we actually are, have been very lucky, very fortunate to be able to go to Oga's Cantina, um, which is in Galaxy's Edge. Uh, we've talked about it a lot this week. So if you don't know what that is, I'm sorry. Um, it's a basically a, a an area of Disney World that is all decked out looking like uh star wars you can go see all the ships you you can see the millennium falcon you can ride a couple of rides you can go to this place called oka's cantina it is all amazingly star warsified and it's amazing and we're gonna take a drink uh from that cantina now i don't know if it's the exact drink uh but we found this on Mm wishesandwayfinding.com and i i have to say it's pretty close it's really good it is pretty close and really good. Um, yeah, if you've ever uh, made your way down to Oga's Cantina, either at Disney World or Disneyland, uh, you might have had one of these because it comes in the collectible uh, little tiki mug, uh, which I've got. Uh, I think I got a picture of it up on our uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, so you can uh, take a look for yourself. But yeah, this is the Yub Nub, which is uh, Ewok language for freedom. Uh, and what a, what a great time. What a great celebration. The tiki mug's awesome because it's like this, uh, I don't know, like wood carved hieroglyphs of their of their victory over the Empire which is which is pretty great. So uh, what better way to celebrate May the 4th? What better way to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi? And what better way to celebrate uh, a drink and a movie, but having a yub dub? So let's mix one of these up real quick. Uh, into your shaker tin, let's go with one and a half ounces of Malibu pineapple rum, one and a half ounces of uh, spiced rum. Uh, at Oga's, they use Sailor Jerry's, which is what we use, but you could use Captain Morgan, you know, any kind of spice 
Bacardi Spice Rum, you know, whatever you want. Uh, so one and a half ounces of that. A tablespoon of passion fruit syrup, a half a cup of orange pineapple juice, and one tablespoon of lime juice. Into the shaker tin with some ice, shake that up, strain it into your tiki glass, also filled with ice. Um, if you have an umbrella, go for it. I don't know if the Ewoks have umbrellas. They might just uh, ride it out in the rain, just uh, get into one of their one of their little huts. But definitely going to drink a couple of these in celebration, uh, for sure, when we're drumming on the uh, helmets of some stormtroopers. So, yub nub, Michaela. Yub nub for freedom. Yub nub for this cocktail. What do you think? I think uh, you want to make sure that you shake it real well. Um, that's that's my first initial thought. So the first time I made this, um, playing with it by myself, I did not use a shaker tin. And that was mistake number one, because the rum will stay floated at the top and it will be incredibly boozy, uh, very tasty, but it, it really packs a punch. So listen to uh, Brian's instructions here. Use the shaker tin. Um, so that it's all nice and mixed in. Um, I have to say my second time making it with your instructions, following it as it should be, um, it was much less boozy and much more well-rounded. So you get this really beautiful crispness. Uh, the pineapple juice really comes through in the orange juice. It's not super orangey. I was worried that this was, this version was going to be mm, too much like a, like a, just a, an orange juice rum thing. And I was happy to say that that really didn't come through nearly as much as I was afraid it was. So the passion fruit syrup just adds a little bit of extra sweetness um, that I really liked. So th this is really mm -hmm. good. It It is a bit boozy. So it's, you know, a shot of the rum and a shot, well, a shot of the pineapple rum and a shot of the spice rum. So, um, you know, I would say maybe two's your max here. Okay. It's kind of like a yeah. martini. Don't, don't do a lot of this and please never drink and drive. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Uh, you could probably dial that rum back a little bit too, to like one ounce if you wanted to, but uh, we did the one and a half and uh, the taste flavor was really great there. Um, the passion fruit syrup I found is in like a little like squeeze bottle that you might find in your cocktail aisle or you might have to order it online, but it lasts for a super long time. So that's good. So you'd be able to make up a bunch of these or other tiki drinks or just jazz up. Uh, you know, if you're wanting to do like a mocktail, some passion fruit syrup and like a Sprite, that sounds good. Uh, maybe we should try mm -hmm. that sometime for sure. So uh, I don't know. That is the Yub Nub. Uh, it is delicious. Give it a try and let us know if you've made it down to Oga's and tried any of the other cocktails. We want to know uh, your experiences with that. If you have any pictures, um, all of that stuff. So send that our way. And if you want it some more, Oga's goodness, we talked about the Fuzzy Tauntaun, uh, which is an amazing cocktail uh, concoction that they have down there. We talked about that on the Lobby Bar. And over on Patreon, we talked a little bit more about some Oga's and Galactic Star Cruiser cocktails there. So if you want a little bit more uh, Star Wars cocktail goodness for your May the 4th, head on over to patreon.com slash drink the movies and uh, get some more content there. But Michaela, we've had a couple of yub nubs now. Do you have anything you want to come clean about? I called you out on saying that this was not your husband's uh, favorite Star Wars movie uh, because it's, it totally is. And I know that because I know Star Wars better than you know your own husband. So go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so apparently I'm totally wrong. Um, apparently, uh, well, first things first, first things first. Okay. So what I, the, what I recollect in my marriage of 10 years uh, to Anthony was that he really liked when Luke was all moody, which I mm. totally thought was the second one. Um, no. because he's real <laughs> moody in that one. Easy, he's, easy mistake to make. Easy he's mistake right? to make. But apparently when Anthony says moody, what he really means is he's wearing black. And so the, okay. I was wrong and his favorite movie is Return of the Jedi. So great. I'm glad that he's on the right side of things. Um, yeah. did you see what I did there? Did he, he, um, he prescribes to the Johnny Black school of, or Johnny Cash <laughs> right. school of a man in black. Uh, That's right. movie. So, so yeah, so apologies to Anthony. We wanted to make sure we got that correct. Didn't want to have anything incorrect here on May the 4th. It's too important of a day. So uh, I don't know, Michaela, after, after coming clean, you're going to need the extra yub dub. So let's yeah, go, just... uh, let's go mix up another one. We'll take a quick break and then we'll be right back to chat about Return of the Jedi. Spoiler warning for Return of the Jedi. If you've not yet seen this or any of the other Star Wars films, I hate to tell you this, but we're going to talk about all of them. And there's some pretty big spoilers. This is your warning. If you don't want to know any of these things, then I don't know, go live under a rock because I think everybody pretty much already knows. However, uh, in all seriousness, we're going to talk about these things if you don't want to hear the spoilers for Return of the Jedi or A New Hope or The Empire Strikes Back, then please press pause now, go make yourself an amazing yub nub, you'll be very glad that you did, and then come back and listen to us chat about it.
That's right. Yeah. If you've not seen it yet, you've had 40 years to do so because uh, this came out in 1983. So happy 40th birthday to Return of the Jedi. I feel like Star Wars is something that people now just uh, ha get through like osmosis at birth. You just kind of know about Star Wars because it's so collective um, in the uh, society and the world at large. So, yeah, uh, May of 1983, this thing came out. It was directed by Richard Marquand and it was uh, written by Lawrence Kasdan um, and uh, George Lucas uh, there wrote the story. Um, you know, and obviously this is uh, George Lucas's baby uh, for sure. We've got Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford back as Luke, Leia, and Han, and then everyone else is back, of course, uh, Billy Dee Williams, Anthony Daniels, Peter Mayhew, uh, Ian McDermott as the Emperor, James Earl Jones, uh, voicing everyone's back, everyone's back for this third installment, uh, the closing uh, installment in Star Wars. Um, as far as we knew, back in 1983 anyway, this was it. This was the thrilling conclusion, Michaela. And thrilling it was. It uh, did really well at the box office. Obviously, uh, didn't do so good at the Oscars, though. It was 0 for 4, but even the Academy knew that they had done messed up because it lost art and set direction. Dumb. It lost sound and sound effects editing. Dumb. It lost original score. Okay, maybe uh, this was this was the third third go at this, so, so maybe that. Uh, but the Academy said 0 for 4. That's not Right. Uh, we're going to give you a special achievement for visual effects. Congratulations. Now, I have a question. Do they not have a visual effects scar? Now, I have a question, Brian. Did they not have a visual effects Oscar at that point in time to I... give to people? I'm assuming they probably had one going forward, but I feel like the all three of the original trilogy films uh, won a special uh, achievement Oscar for that. And maybe uh, after doing it three times, maybe they said, you know what, maybe this is important and maybe right. we should uh, look at this a little bit more critically. But yeah, but yeah won, won the special achievement there for visual effects, which which is amazing. We're going to talk about it here uh, very shortly when we get into the film. But there's so much creature design and stop motion and space stuff like like in the first like 20 minutes of the film is probably more than like the entire like decade of other films that were made. It's insane. Yeah, it's totally insane. And the fact that we saw this in the theaters and it was 40 years old, um, it holds up so well to the test of time. I mean, it still looks absolutely gorgeous and believable. Um, and uh, even the stuff that they added, because of course we didn't see the original. We saw the the new nuanced version that was that was redone in the late nineties. Um, even that looks, you know, it pales in comparison to the original stuff that was done to make it mm -hmm. look like we were in space and things were blowing up. Just uh, absolutely amazing, uh, and that's probably why it, it is infused into our DNA uh, upon birth on this planet <laughs> because. Um, it just has done things that no movie has ever done probably before and and definitely since. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. So kudos there. Special achievement in visual effects. Uh, well warranted for sure. So let's get into this one. It is an effects uh, driven film uh, for sure. And we get right. Uh, we get started right out uh, in space. We see a new Death Star. It is under construction. A little shuttle drops out of the gigantic Star Destroyer, uh, pops down, goes into this uh, new under construction Death Star. Darth Vader walks out and he says, hey, guys, the Emperor is on his way. You better uh, get cracking on this thing because uh, he's not going to be happy about that. Uh, boom, sets it up right there. There is our villain. That is their motivation. Let's get the second Death Star going. But we're going back to the desert. Michaela, R2-D2 and C-3PO headed through the desert. Uh, headed on Tatooine to go find our friend Han Solo. That's right. So uh, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, and and spoiler warning for, for anybody who has not listened to any of the other two May the 4th uh, extravaganzas that Drink the Movies has done, I have a black hole when it comes to this this trilogy. Um, so I definitely had to reset and say, okay, where were we? What happened at the end of the second film? Um, and so if anybody doesn't know, okay, um, Han Solo has been frozen in carbonite uh, and Boba Fett has taken that carbonite back to Jabba the Hutt's palace. Um, this palace is real cool. Uh, there's a lot of additions that were made at the end of the century on this, but um, there's like really neat creatures. There's some music, musical talent. There's a green lady that's chained up to uh, Jabba who is gross and nasty and just amazing because he's, I, I'm sure he's like animatronic puppetry. Jabba, not, just... not the green lady. No, not the Jabba. green lady. Yes, Jabba is gross. Yeah, no, she's 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 on point. She looks great um, and terrified because she's chained to a big toad. <laughs> yeah. Just... 
this really gross thing. Um, what is Jabba anyway? Because we talk, I mean, this this was a creature that we never yeah. like it, it's just a blob with a tongue. It's really yeah. nasty. It's it's uh he is Jabba the Hutt. He's a hut. Uh it's kind of like a kind of like a slug uh looking guy. He's sitting there, he is the crime lord of Tatooine, he has Han Solo frozen in carbonite up on his wall. R2 D2 and C3PO go. Uh C3PO knocks on the door, which is a fantastic scene. The little thing pops out, and you know, C3PO's like, I guess they're not gonna let us in. The door starts opening, R2 D2 is wheeling in because R2 D2 is the hero of our story. They get in, they get put to work. Um and then the rest of the crew starts to arrive. We catch little glimpses of Lando Calrissian there under disguise. He's working as one of the guardsmen, I guess, for uh, Jabba the Hutt. Uh, then we've got a uh, bounty hunter bringing in Chewbacca. So Chewbacca's there now. Turns out the bounty hunter is Princess Leia herself. Uh, she is there in disguise. She goes, she gets Han free of this carbonite uh, just in time for Luke to show up, ask for the release of all of his friends. Jabba says no and drops him down into the uh, pit with the uh, crazy rancor. Michael that was probably my favorite scene as a kid. I loved the, the rancor, the little fight there with this guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he is uh, covered in slime. He's like a giant ogre with big teeth. And you feel really bad for the green lady who got who, who met her fate down there. Um, I don't know. You don't see her anywhere. You don't see her bones anywhere. So I guess that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, no, this is really cool because the only way that Luke uh, can kill him is to drop that giant gate on his head. And then, of course, you get this moment of sadness because his little keeper is really sad and is like, oh, that was my baby. And that that made me sad. <laughs> It's all the circle of life here. It's, it's, <laughs> it's all the it's all the circle. It's all the circle of life. That's right. Yeah, that rancor was someone's pet. It is the rancor keeper's pet. Um, it is sad, but it looks great. The rancor looks so amazing. It has all like this like snot and like drool like on its face. It has these long arms. It grabs Luke. He sticks a bone in his mouth and and gets out of there. Drops the door on his head. Um, but you know, meanwhile, Jabba's palace. They're having a party. There's about ten billion uh different alien creatures uh running around. Uh, which is why it won Academy Award for uh, visual effects. Uh, uh, it is insane. There are all of these things that all got toys. Uh, it's so fantastic. There's the Max Rebo band. Uh, one of my one of my favorites there. That little blue uh, elephant guys uh, just wailing away on his uh, piano. It is the best time to be alive at Jabba's palace. But not for long. Not for long. Uh, because Luke does get out of there. They are sent off to the pit of Carcoon uh, to be slowly digested over a thousand years. Uh, they get they get told to walk the plank, basically uh, pirate style out here. But you know, Luke didn't have any weapons when he came in uh but maybe his little buddy uh r2 has a trick up his sleeve with a brand new lightsaber uh crafted by luke in his jedi ways r2 sends him the lightsaber through the air it is some swashbuckling adventure uh princess leia gets one up on jabba the hut strangles him to death uh which is great because uh, jabba's the worst and princess leia is the best uh and they get out of there so michaela uh the jabba's palace section it is it's like the first 20 minutes of the movie i liken it to a james bond opening because uh, you get your villain plots and then you get this whole big action uh kind of set piece to get the story rolling here but but what do you think jabba's palace are there any kind of highlights for you in this section or uh things that you really like or any of the creatures that look cool or uh what do you think here yeah the blue the blue elephant creatures are really cute and cool um and the dude playing like the i i don't, I don't even know what the name of it is but it's like a it's like a piano guitar because there's right <laughs> yeah. and with like a it's like a harmonica a yeah. yeah with a yeah that was super cool um i mean i just think the fact that this didn't win set direction is insane because it created this whole world that um, looks amazing. And we're still talking about, we're still um, trying to get to, I mean, there, the Olga's cafe, I think was very much uh, pays homage to a lot that we see from an entertainment perspective. When we go, when we go to Olga's cafe, there's a lot of things that really remind me of Java's throne room. Um, it, it's like a, I don't know. It, it was really neat. And the 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 visualization of getting Han out of Carbonite is actually really amazing, too. Um, and I don't think I don't know if we've ever talked about that piece, but the way that Han kind of portrays a person who's been frozen for a period of time. Right. He's they they, they kind of what's they peel him out of the Carbonite and mm -hmm. it makes this really 
awful sound, but it's <laughs> like, like it's hard to really explain. It's kind of like a slimy <laughs> sound, but then it's also like Velcro-y. And yeah. I, I thought that the sound in that was just really amazing because I don't even know how, I, I mean, it, it really <laughs> solidified that carbonite was something you can be fro that can be frozen into and that you would survive. And I really like that. Um, yeah, th this is a, an adventure of adventures, this, this opening. And I really like it because it's so much faster paced than the first two mil movies. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, the first one's really setting up who Luke is and where he is and all of that. Um, and then the second one, you've got that, you know, uh, scene where you're on Hoff and you know he gets like half his face ripped off. It's not the same. This is like we're we're in it, we're we're in the middle of this this battle and everything is happening and it's much faster pace. I really love the opening about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the opening uh, sequence here is is really fun. And it's it's one of the reasons why this is a lot of uh, people's favorite Star Wars film because it's so kind of adventure and and fun, especially for kids. Kind of this uh, swashbuckling adventure here. Um, I really like. Um, you mentioned Han getting unfrozen from the carbonite. I really like kind of his interactions with Leia. There, we see that she is still very much, um, you know, kind of <laughs> kind of emotionally devoted to him and getting him out and seeing him to safety. And then uh, when he's reunited with Chewbacca, there in the little prison cell and Chewbacca is kind of overcome with joy to see that he is okay um, that's great because the older I get the more Chewbacca becomes my uh, favorite character I don't know that he'll ever uh, surpass R2-D2 as my favorite character but but Chewbacca is uh, certainly uh, worthy of some extra praise there so this section is really fun but uh, moral of the story we get the crew off of uh, Tatooine we're good to go uh, you get a really cool shot of the Millennium Falcon and Luke's X-Wing kind of flying through space and then they kind of split apart as uh, the Millennium Falcon is going to reunite with the Rebel Alliance, but Luke has a bit of a pit stop to make. He's on his way to see an old friend, he tells R2-D2. That's right. And uh, so if, if any of you, we've, we've said spoiler warning, right? So in the, in the second film, uh, Luke gets a lot of learning done uh, about the Force and how to be a Jedi, uh, going to Dagobah. We, we made a drink about it, and the drink was amazing and very, very um, green. Uh, he goes to see his friend Yoda. Yoda is just about the coolest Jedi master ever, perhaps. He's little, he's green, he's mighty. He's got these really cute pointy ears. Um, he's voiced by Frank Oz. It's amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Luke gets there to uh, to reunite with Yoda. You know, he wants to wants to get a little bit more uh, learning. He doesn't know what else he needs to do to become a full fledged uh, Jedi Knight. Uh, but he he thinks he's well on his way. He gets back to Dagobah. Uh, but unfortunately, Yoda has fallen under some ill health. Uh, he's like uh, nine hundred years old. Uh, that's going to take its toll on anyone, even uh, Grandmaster uh, Jedi Masters uh, by the name of Yoda. So they're there. They're having a little bit of a conversation. Yoda's kind of kind of milling about, and finally kind of lays in bed as he's uh getting ready to uh uh return to the force as it were and uh you know luke asks him he says you know uh at the end at the end of our last movie together uh darth vader said he was my dad is that true and yoda's like well i'm i'm kind of tired but yeah <laughs> yeah he is uh unfortunate that you went and fought him even though i told you not to but yeah it's it's true um i'm gonna peace out go be one with the force now so luke is left there devastated doesn't know what to do his master just left so he goes outside uh he's looking at the x-wing but luckily uh obi-wan can Obi, Alec Guinness is back in ghost form uh, to tell Luke all of the truths, all of all of the things that they should have told him uh, from the start. But, they, you know, they 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 held it back, you know, as the Jedi Plot Council, twist. Jedi Council tends to do. And it turns out, yeah, uh, not only is Darth Vader your father, you also have a sister uh, and and you probably know who that is. You might have been kissing her. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly how he does it. It's great. And the first thing we all do is go, oh, um, no, I really like this piece um, because it 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 reminds me of what we as like normal humans who live on Earth outside of the Star Wars world, what we would love, right? We would love someone to explain things that sometimes when a person dies, we just don't ever get that closure on. And so I really love this. It's very satisfying to me because, you know, you feel bad for Luke because he doesn't get any of his answers from Yoda. Yoda's like, I'm done. I'm tired. Leave me alone. Um, he disappears. And I love how the blanket kind of folds down because mm -hmm. he, his mm -hmm. body just uh, dematerializes and becomes one with the force. And, but Alec Guinness is like, Hey, I'm going to come back in my like ghosty force self. 
And I'm going to tell you all the things. And I really like the way that they describe this because there's a lot of humans out here uh, on earth who don't have perfect parents, whose parents have done some pretty awful things. And for me, I really like this because it it was a way to explain it to him that, hey, you know, your father was actually this really amazing Jedi and he really loved your mom and he he wasn't a bad person. And then he got turned to the dark side and that's when he quit being your father, really. Mm. That's when he quit being Anakin Skywalker and he became Darth Vader. And, you know, what, you know, in likening this to like humans and earth, um, I, it, it's, it's kind of a, a nice way to ex- explain and come to terms with that as a child, because, you know, it wasn't that he was abandoned. It was that they had to save them because now Anakin was dead. And mm-hmm. so they lied to him, but they didn't really lie to him because the Anakin, at, you know, that we know from episode two and episode one um, would never have made these choices, would never have mm-hmm. gone to the dark side. But the way it transpired was that he did. And that's why um, things kind of played out the way that they did. I also really like the way in which they... <laughs> They kind of turned this weird love triangle into not a triangle at all, which was really convenient because uh, watching this at the beginning, I totally thought Luke and Leia were going to be a thing. Mm. And uh, and then I was so did Luke, to be fair. So did Luke, to be fair. Probably. Uh, Right. (laughs) And um, yeah. But then, you know, when when Han and Leia started to get, you know, more drawn to each other, I I was really worried that this triangle was going to end in someone's heartbreak, mostly being Luke's. But uh, this this makes it really tidy with a bow that he doesn't have to feel bad. He can still love her. Um, He just can't kiss her anymore. So that's good for for him. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you bring up a really good point that it it does. um, You know, it is neat, I guess, in this kind of theorem that uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi has and probably the whole of the Jedi Council is is that, you know, uh, all of these things are true from a certain point of view, which is kind of a, a theme of Star Wars then going forward, right? You're seeing more of the points of view of of the villains and the heroes and kind of everyone, and everyone has their own motivations and everyone has their own uh, sort of potential uh, pitfalls and things like that. So so it, it it is a really good way to kind of kind of describe that and to uh, make it make sense to Luke. But, you know, he, he finds out he uh, Darth Vader's his dad. He has to go confront him. He finds out that Leia uh, is his sister separated at birth. Uh, so he's got to go deal with that. But there's some other stuff to deal with. Uh, it's called a Death Star. So we are headed back to the Rebel Alliance to the base there. Uh, as it turns out, there is going to be an assault led on the Death Star. Uh, some idiot's going to be in charge of that. Uh, there's going to be an assault on Endor to bring down the tower that controls the uh, kind of defense system. Some idiot is going to be in charge of that. Turns out that Lando and Han are those idiots and they tell each other so much uh, as it goes. But yeah, the crew is getting back together here uh, to go off on our last adventure. So Lando goes, gets in the Millennium Falcon. Han says, I have a bad feeling about this. I'm never going to see my ship again. I think this is going to go bad. Leia says, calm down. It'll be fine. Let's go take care of business. They get on the shuttle Tidarium and head off to the forest moon of Endor. That's right. Uh, yeah, they traveled to this really cool place. I, I, where was this part of the movie filmed? Do you know that bit of yeah, trivia? It, yeah, it was, uh, it was filmed in the uh, Redwood Forest of uh, That's California. Right. There you go. Uh, so it's super lush. There's lots of green everywhere. There's <laughs> which is which is close to wine country. So so yeah yeah. yeah. So <laughs> and I can't blame them one bit. I hope they had some field trips over to the wine country while they were doing this. It, that'd be super cool if they went and drank a bit of wine. Leia, Luke, that'd be cool. I'd love to see a picture of all of them like drinking a really cool cab on the Howell Mountain somewhere. Anyway, I digress. I digress. So the land of Endor is. Probably, I've talked about this, it's my favorite planet. It's my favorite planet because it has a tribe of Ewoks. Ewoks are the most cutest, wonderful, cuddliest looking things. They've got these beady dark eyes. They've got these really weird looking fingernails, but they're very sweet. They don't speak uh, our language. They speak Ewokian or Ewok, uh, and they they sound like they're grunting acutely. It's, it's just this, they're just my favorite, and they're so great. And the leader... Uh, my favorite is he's not the leader. He's like the baby, but he is very feisty. He's kind of like the R2-D2 of the Ewok mm. tribe. And mm-hmm. his name mm-hmm. is Wicked. We don't have any idea what his name is uh, until the later films, but that's his name. And uh, he meets Leia. She's trying to explain that she's not an enemy, that they're, they're friends. And um, it's uh, 
it's a really cute scene. And then they start running or flying through the trees on these speeder bikes um, that actually look really cool. I did not pay enough attention to this uh, the first 20 times I've seen it because the bikes themselves, they're they're like two different types of bikes. Mm. Mm -hmm. that I noticed for the first time. Um, and they have little guns on them, but they, the, the way in which they go super fast through these trees is very dangerous. And a lot of uh, stormtroopers end up dying and meeting their end, trying to to fight with the Ewoks and uh, chase Leia because they know where the forest trees are. <laughs> they they do know where the forest trees are. Yeah, you get a you get a really great kind of kind of scene there at the beginning as as they get there and uh, they're trying to figure out how to get into this bunker and there's uh, all these uh, scout troopers on their speeder bikes that go and I uh, really love this scene. Of course, it's super fun as they get on their uh, Luke and Leia on the speeder bikes and give chase and uh, you know unfortunately get get separated. They do get the one up on these uh, speeder bike guys, but that's uh, but that's not all great because they do as I said get separated. They both kind of crash and uh, have to go on their separate ways. Luke returns to the camp which is where you're supposed to go if you get separated um he says i lost leia we got separated that's bad news everyone's going to go look for her uh but leia gets found by this uh very adorable uh wicket that you mentioned he is going to uh pop up and save her uh come to the rescue as a scout trooper gets to drop on her uh but you know gets her gets her safe and sound gets her back to the ewok village and uh that is uh where our crew is going for the time being uh now michaela let me ask you this so so the rest of the crew, they go to find Leia. Uh, they get captured. They get tied to these poles. They get carried. They start building fires underneath them. Uh, straight up tells Han Solo that we're going to eat you, guy. Uh, so deal mm -hmm. with that. But then Leia pops out in this dress. Where did that dress come from? Uh, yeah. Ma Michaela, did they did they did they craft that dress real quick, or where did that come from? Uh, the last unfortunate soul that ran across <laughs> that you are. It probably. I'm thinking it's the latter instead of the former because there's like. There's texture on that dress. There's, there's, this is not something they just threw together. Um, they don't have a lot of cloth on, no, on, no. on Endor, they, right? All of the Ewoks are wearing like a, that, like that could have made a hundred, a hundred hoods for Ewoks. That's right. And so, yeah. Um, so I don't know, Delilah, whoever, who, <laughs> that poor soul. <laughs> um, or maybe we're just moving at the speed of plot and they were like, hey, we got to put we got to put Leia in something. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> she... maybe Leia's Leia's the smartest of the group for sure. Maybe she just traveled with that. Maybe it was in her satchel. Uh, she had an extra dress. She knew it was important to take a change of clothes. You're going to Endor. It's going to be it's like hot and swampy forest there. Uh, take, take a change of clothes. Maybe that was hers. The whole sure. time. Yeah. Uh, let's believe that because I mean, honestly, they're so cute. They couldn't have possibly wanted to kill and eat the people. And, however, I will say, <laughs> um, Luke has this great idea when they're all captured and, you know, C-3PO is being worshipped as this gold god, right? And he's, Luke's like, hey, tell them that you're going to be mad if you don't, if they don't let us go. And he's like, I don't want to sell them that. And it's like, come on, C-3PO, you, you can't, you can't walk two feet without help. What? So you're going to let everybody, everybody except R2-D2 die. What are you doing? So of course they use some force. Uh, Luke raises the chair. I really like that because everybody like uh, immediately freaks out. Even, even Han and Leia are like, Oh, <laughs> your skills are really great. <laughs> they're, they're all kind of shocked. You know, they're like, Oh, you've done a, you've done some learning on this force stuff. That's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then they, they ultimately decide to let them go and not cook them and eat them. That's always a not good not cook them and eat them. Yeah, absolutely. So they decide to let them go. Uh, C-3PO may or may not be a god. I love he's like, I didn't know I had that in me because uh, uh, C-3PO uh, is uh, pretty great. So so they get out. They get released. Uh, they're talking to them. Uh, I really love this part. Um, as, as I've grown up, this has quickly become one of my favorite parts of Return of the Jedi, and it's when C-3PO is there kind of in this uh, central uh, kind of tree of the Ewok village, and he's kind of retelling the story of, of Star Wars and how they got there, and he's got kind of like the voice effects of uh, uh, going on but i really like kind of the storytelling you see all the ewoks are like huddled up and like trying to peek in the doors to see it it's it's really awesome uh but the ewoks are like yeah these guys sound like bad news they're on our moon uh let's get them out of there maybe we can catch and eat some of these uh stormtroopers i don't know let's let's go let's uh get this job done so uh they decide they're going to to help out they're going to go and get this bunker they're going to destroy the satellite dish and destroy the uh kind of 
the shield system for the second Death Star. Uh, meanwhile, up in space, you got Lando Calrissian flying around in the Millennium Falcon. You got the whole like fleet of the Rebel Alliance has showed up to take on the second Death Star. They think they've got the drop on the Death Star, but uh, turns out maybe they don't. Maybe the Emperor is smarter than everyone else in the room after all. Uh, he is prepared for them, and he is just biding his time until Luke gives himself up and goes in. And that is exactly what happens, Michaela. Luke says, you know what? Uh, I'm endangering the mission. I can't be here. I got to go take care of I got I got some family stuff going on. Uh, let me tell Leia about it and then I'm going to go. Um, I really love the scene. I'll let you talk about this one because this one is full of love. But uh, you got Luke and Leia talking on this bridge and then Han and Leia talking on this bridge. Uh, it's it's pretty great. Some really great character stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. Luke. Luke has not. Uh, he doesn't he hasn't yet told Leia uh, that she's his sister, um, which is, uh, but he, she notices immediately. Uh, and, and this is where you start, uh, the whole canon around, you know, Leia actually, um, have being able to touch the force and be, you know, being not being one with the force, but like having that, uh, ability to feel things through the force, um, because she sees Luke and is immediately like, are you okay? What's going on? And he says, well, you know, ask me some other time. And, and so they, they meet on this bridge, by the way, this bridge is really cute because it's made for the Ewoks. And so like the, the safety bar comes up to like all of their knees, except for Carrie Fisher, who's about as tall as me. And it's almost normal on her. Um, but everybody else, it's like, it's, it's kind of laughable because it's not safe for them at all. Um, but anyway, they're on this bridge and Luke is like, hey, uh, that's my father. Uh, it, it's it's your father. Like, I have to go. This is how this is going to go. And she's really worried and really upset. Uh, and then he, Luke kind of exits the scene. And of course, um, Han enters and he sees that she's really upset. And she's like, what? what? He's like, what's going on? And then he, uh, Han is, is a very jealous kind of person and he doesn't understand that she's just worried and, and concerned and doesn't think that she's ever going to see Luke again. Um, and not that she's in love with him, but that, you know, he's important to her. And so this really, it's a, it's a lovely scene where you get to see more of the relationship between Han and Leia because Leia is upset and Han is kind of holding her, but he also doesn't really understand why she's wanting him to hold her um, because he's very confused and they don't really talk about like, the love triangle that Han is feeling is going on at all. Uh, Cause it's not the right time. Um, but that's okay. Cause we talk about it later and, and all's well at the end, but yeah, this yeah. scene's really great. Um, the costume design I have to say is also pretty amazing because this dress that either was another person that was cooked to death or it was in her backpack. It's beautiful. Her hair is like, got this, she's got this crown of braids on top and her hair is really long and flowy and Han, he looks amazing. He's, you know, got that cool shirt that everybody identifies Han with. We talk about the first film, A New Hope, being like a, a princess in a castle being rescued. She's still quite like a princess, right? She's a she's like a total badass uh, of a princess because she's she's awesome um, and she doesn't necessarily need rescuing. But I really love this scene because it's still this beautiful love fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Thanks for letting me talk all about it because it's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I I do love it because she's very vulnerable and I I love kind of her interaction with Han then because you know Han comes out obviously is kind of this this uh, you know has this uh, feelings of of jealousy and and being spurned but you can tell then you know she asks him uh, to hold her and he, he stands there and and does and, and comforts her so you see kind of the depth of love that Han has for her too right uh, you go from the first film where he's like well you know uh, she's a beautiful princess has a lot of money I could I could be into that but it turns out he really is into that and and the love is coming through here on this little tiny uh, Ewok bridge so uh luke goes uh he turns himself in at the bunker i guess you just walk up and say hey can i go talk to my dad they say sure uh let's take you up to the death star and we'll get that sorted uh so he does he goes up uh talking to darth vader he's saying dad calm down man what are <laughs> don't be evil you could be you could come back and be be a good guy and you know darth vader's like yeah that's that's a good thought and all son but i'm i'm so far beyond that uh not even worth talking about i gotta take you to my boss the emperor uh he's gonna set you straight you can join us on the dark side if you want that would be fun um maybe we could do that so they go up to the 
to the Emperor's throne room. Uh, Ian McDermott there playing the Emperor, sitting in this boss-looking chair in front of this sweet window. It is like the corner office of the Death Star, which is round. I don't know how they do corner offices, but uh, it's a it's a pretty good view. And from that view, you can see the space battle going out. Not going so well for the Rebels. Uh, Luke is getting a little moodier and moodier as this goes on. But, you know, he's, he's trying to keep his cool. He's saying, I don't want to go to the dark side. Um, and they have a bit of a tussle, uh, him and Darth Vader. And I really love this uh, scene because you have kind of the reluctance of Luke to to fight his father, but then ultimately they kind of they kind of start coming to blows. Um, the music swells up. The music is beautiful um, in this section. It's kind of this uh, choral piece, you know, over top of of this uh, John Williams music. It is really excellent, and Luke ends up getting the upper hand, so to speak, on his dad by cutting off his hand. Uh, take that, Dad! You cut off my hand last time. I'm cutting off your hand this time. But Luke gets a look inside of that hand. It is full of wires, just like Obi Wan had said. So Michaela, this is this is, this is the reunion here of father and son one final battle for the soul of anakin skywalker yeah Ooh. and it's it, it it's very hard because you really get into it and then they cut to the fighting on endor um right at the pivotal moments um and it's 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 great because it holds the tension really well um because you see this and i remember even even when we saw this for the screening of this podcast sh being shocked uh because it happens so quickly and you see those wires and they're kind of you know red and black and, and you're like oh oh and you can see luke kind of dealing with this and realizing even more so that this person is more machine than man that's like a famous line that you know rings throughout this whole thing that he um he and luke is is continuing to refuse to be in a situation to go to the dark side um <clears throat> senator palpatine uh is one of the scariest i i don't know where he is on like the list of scary villains um but mm. he he should be higher than probably where he's sitting um because he has these electric things that come out of his hands um he is super gross looking um he's 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 like got this crazy makeup he's really old uh fun fact ian mcdermott not very old when mm -hmm. uh this film came out um and he plays the emperor uh throughout like all nine of these things um and the older he gets the more and more he ends up looking with with makeup like uh like the palpatine that is gross and scary but um yeah i really like this part because they we so we see the battle on these on both fronts right mm -hmm. and very um before this film i don't know how well that was done um in kind of these epic movies that we're talking that we talk about usually it's like this one battle that happens and we have different scenes in the same battle mm -hmm. this is sort of like one battle but one is very internal and one is very external because you've got han and the team down on, on endor trying to uh get the shields uh broken down so that Calrissian and his kind of force up in the sky can kill this Death Star and attack the Death Star and destroy it. And then you've got on the Death Star itself, this internal battle between father and son. And it, it's just very different than anything we'd ever seen before, like from a tactical perspective. And I really like the way that they broke that in and how they all kind of come mm -hmm. to their conclusion in a very um, like pieced out way. I, yeah. I'm not sure if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the editing here is really great as it's kind of able to keep track of these three battles that are going on uh, kind of simultaneously. So you've, so you've got Luke and Darth Vader there uh, have kind of come to an end. But, you know, the space battle is still waging. They're still waiting for uh, Han Solo and crew to get that shield uh, taken down. And they are going to get it taken down. You get the get the really fun uh, kind of adventuring with the Ewoks there as they're going. They're using their uh, Ewok tools. They're uh, throwing rocks. They're rolling logs and swinging logs and stuff. Um, there's, a, there's a really sad scene I'm not even going to talk about where one of the Ewoks doesn't make it through the battle. Um, not even not even worth my time to to cry about that. Why did you do that, you jerks? Um, but, uh, you know, Ewoks uh, end up getting getting the upper hand. They commandeer uh, one of the ATST walkers. Uh, Chewbacca's in there, drives it, and they end up, uh, you know, uh, getting the 
this thing taken care of. They go in, set some charges. It is a really great looking explosion uh, as it goes up and kind of this bunker is uh, kind of explodes and then it engulfs this gigantic uh, satellite dish that had to have been like, I don't know, like 14 million miles tall or something. But it, it looks incredible. Shield is down. Lando and crew fly into the uncompleted Death Star, blow it up. It is time to go. So Darth Vader and Luke have their fight, Michaela. Uh, they do. Uh, Luke gets the one up on Darth Vader. Uh, Emperor Palpatine says, that was a pretty good job, Luke. You can be my right hand. Now, Luke throws away his lightsaber and says, I will never uh, join you. I will never join the dark side. And Emperor Palpatine uh, takes that very personally. He starts uh, shooting out some lightning bolts at Luke. Uh, it's going bad. But uh, fortunately uh, for us, for Luke, Darth Vader uh, has a wee bit of humanity in there. And you're not going to do that to my son, Emperor Palpatine. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to throw you down this long shaft and job done. Uh, soul saved for uh, Anakin Skywalker. Um, and then you get probably the most emotional scene here. And uh, maybe in the original trilogy, maybe in all of Star Wars, maybe in all of uh, cinema. But it is Luke dragging his father uh, out of this burning down uh, Death Star, trying to rescue him. Um, and, you know, uh, Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker says, there is a way to rescue me, Luke. Uh, take off my helmet. Yeah, this scene always gets me because you uh, have seen glimpses of what Anakin looks like underneath the helmet. Um, there's the words echoing. He's more machine than man. And, you know, it, how bad is he going to look? What's what, what is that going to look like? Um, and the, the helmet actually helps him breathe and keeps him alive. And so Luke is like, uh, are you sure you want me to take this off? And he's like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die. I mean, there's no, there's no help for me. So go ahead. And I'd like to see you with my eyes. Um, which is pretty beautiful because you don't know this at the time, but um, given what we know about episodes one, two, and three, he actually never saw his children. He never saw them. Um, they were uh, born uh, when he thought that uh, Padme had died. So uh, seeing this moment where he gets to see his kid and it's like the first time looking at a child. I mean, I remember seeing my son for the first time and it's it's pretty intense and so that kind of beauty moment, as well as see knowing that this is the last time that either one of them are going to really see each other uh, until until the force occurs, right? And you, he goes off in the force. Um, <clears throat> this is a it's really a, a tough, very emotional scene um, because Luke Luke is always, you know, since realizing who his father was, has believed that his father actually that there was some good in him. And I really love that theme in general, because as as bad as a person is, it's in a lot of religious texts around the world um, that as bad as a human is, there there can be some measure of goodness and there can be something redeemable. And mm -hmm. we see that in in this ultimate villain that is Darth Vader. Um, and so it, it yeah, that's 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 all I have to say about that, because I'll start crying. But it's very it's very moving. And. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is very moving and uh, he needs to get out of there because the Death Star is blowing up. But uh, we have won all of our all of our battles, right? Uh, Luke has come out on top there. Uh, the Death Star is blown up and uh, all of the uh, stormtroopers have been dealt with uh, justly down on the forest moon of Endor. So we get back. Uh, you get a nice little scene there with uh, Han and Leia. You know, Han says, you know, uh, don't worry. Luke wasn't on the Death Star when it blew up. And when he gets here, you know, I'll get out of your way. You guys uh, love each other. And Leia's like, we do love each other. Uh, but more like a brother and sister, uh, not like you and I love each other. So so we're going to uh, run with that. So they're there. They're celebrating. Uh, Luke shows up, uh, has a, a very beautiful kind of imagery there with the funeral uh, pyre there of Darth Vader. Um, you see his helmet kind of there melting in, in the fire. Uh, everyone's celebrating. It kind of pans around the galaxy to different places, Coruscant and Naboo. And, uh, you know, everyone is uh, cheering, pulling down uh, the statues of the emperor and stuff. It's uh, really pretty great there as uh, everything is 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 come out on top everyone is happy the rebel alliance has won the day um and our our crew is off on their on their next adventure to rebuild the galaxy i guess so that is return of the jedi michaela that is the final installment of our uh trilogy but it wouldn't be complete without one last appearance from our jedi masters um up in the treetops uh so you've got uh, yoda and obi-wan and uh anakin skywalker uh played by Sebastian Shaw in the original, um, but has been replaced by Aiden Christensen uh, here uh, as we go back to uh, the original, I guess the uh, younger version of uh, Anakin Skywalker there, but uh, pretty great when they look up in the trees and, and Luke gets uh, one last glance at his uh, mentors and uh, father there. 
Yeah, you definitely, I, as a, you know, human, you definitely want to think that anybody that you cared about that has left this earth uh, is is somehow able to see you. Um, and that's kind of cool that they, you, you know, show that. Um, and it's also really neat from a force perspective, because um, at first I was really upset that they changed this and that we have Hayden Christensen looking on as a young Anakin Skywalker from the first three episodes that are 25 years after these films are made. Um, I really like the original where you see um, Sebastian Shaw. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I really like that. Um but then it was it pointed out to me that, you know, that that Sebastian Shaw, that character uh, was Darth Vader and he wouldn't become one with the force, but young Anakin would. And so it kind of makes sense. But I really do love the idea of having your dad who you just saw and said goodbye to is is there. Um, it's mm -hmm. really cool, especially since everyone else is like in this chaotic, like happiness moment. You have a, you know, Luke has this moment of clarity. You know, Leia mm -hmm. doesn't see this, but Luke does. Um, yeah. And it's it's really cool. I do like that they added uh, the celebrations all over the world because I don't think that that was in the original. Mm -hmm. um, and so you get to see that, you know, that there's a real cool party happening on Endor, but it's being shared by all of the galaxy, um, which is really cool because I think that that helps bring home how important it was uh, for the small rebel, rebel alliance to create hope in the entire galaxy. And that's a recurring theme that this, you know, cause it's really not very many people. It's a, you know, it's a few hundred people that are making um, this happen and fighting this battle and, and making that sacrifice uh, for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of planets in the galaxy. And yeah. it's pretty cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone was celebrating. Uh, there were three or four yub nubs deep. Uh, but yeah, you get that uh, kind of parting shots of uh, the mentors and the father kind of smiling down on Luke there. And uh, that's that's uh, where this one wraps up. Michaela. So Return of the Jedi. Um, this is a movie that I would have watched, I don't know, roughly 14 million times as a little kid um, on some VHS rentals from our local library. Um, we were both uh, probably on the uh, on the young side to have gotten to see this in the movie theaters originally when it came out in 1983 would have been uh, too young for that. But yeah, definitely got a lot of uh, home viewings there on the uh, on the good old VCR player um, and then didn't get to see it again in movie theaters until the special editions came out in 1997. Uh, so I went and saw those. I think they came out like uh, pretty much back to back to back, I think, like over like the course of like three months or three or four months, something like that. Um, so I remember going to see those with my dad. And that was my first experience of seeing um, any of the Star Wars Wars films on the big screen so when you and i just went and saw this uh literally last night so about 12 hours ago we walked out of the theater uh seeing this i had kind of that same like feeling and, and emotion and excitedness of you know going to see it or you know it, it felt exactly the same as when i saw you know the the bag of movies my mom brought from the library and i pulled out you know and return of the jedi was in there you know i had i had that same feeling kind of that same excited this level and then the star wars logo splashes on the screen and that fanfare kicks in and uh i don't know i i, I loved it and i'm i'm not a, a huge proponent of saying that you need to go and see things in in the movie theater and things like that i think that seeing stuff at home is perfectly fine but i don't know there's something special about kind of that that shared experience of you know those gold star wars letters coming up on the screen and uh sending everyone into a bit of a fervor yeah no, for sure. I mean, I broke my cardinal rule because uh, I believe in zero cell phone usage in the theater. Um, and I took a little picture. Uh, it, don't worry, there was no flash, no, no, Sneaky. no, Sneaky. no people, no people's viewing uh, pleasure was harmed in this. But uh, I took a picture of the big screen, the big gold letters, because I was like, I don't know when I'm going to see this again. I, this is uh, it, it, it's so special. And it's one of those things, man, in 1977, when the first film came out. No one thought it was going to do what it's done. I mean, it, it's amazing. And it's all due to like the hope and the the love and the uh, the idea of repentance and like, um, st you know, st just good versus evil. All of the all of these things uh, come together in this really uh, amazing story that is not super complicated. It's pretty simple, really, when you think about it. And um, it, it still has managed to completely change the way that we do a lot of things on this planet, at, at least in America, right? I mean, it's this whole world is just amazing that has come out of George Lucas's mind. It's pretty awesome. And uh, I agree. I think that one of the things that we say when 
we talk about a movie kind of standing up to the test of time from a visualization or from the way that the script is written. Um, this, this whole trilogy is um, pretty perfect in that, you know, it's not dated. Understanding the way that these things worked looks and the way that they, the, it, the visualizations ended up being on screen. I mean, it just still looks amazing and seeing it in a big theater with the sounds and it really helps I, I educate those that, you know, like my son, he saw it and he was like, this is really cool. Is this what it was like? And it was like, yeah, only it was the very first time anybody had ever seen it. It was just larger than life. Literally is really special. Yeah, absolutely. So that is uh, Return of the Jedi. That is uh, the end of our May the 4th celebrations. But May the 4th is really a state of mind, Michaela, and we are celebrating it all the time because uh, over on our Patreon, we did some special Star Wars cocktails where we talked about uh, going on the Galactic Star, Star Cruiser, um, the Halcyon, doing some cocktails there, going to Oga's, doing some cocktails there. We talked about that. We talked about recreating the Fuzzy Tauntaun on the Lobby Bar episode earlier this week. So go check that out if you want to recreate that. Our version of it was really, really dead on i think to the one that you get at ogas is amazing so uh very excited that we uh, got that one nailed down it was really fun to experiment with and we're going to be on patreon talking about uh and uh here hopefully in the next week or so as soon as uh michaela uh gets through that so i we just had a tv show on and which sets up this trilogy that we just watched so star wars is alive um as ever if you want to check that out it's on our patreon it's patreon.com slash drink the movies uh it's a great way to support the podcast and get some uh bonus content over there so if you are celebrating Celebrating May the 4th, if you bought some Lego sets or some new toys or posters or you went to see Return of the Jedi or you made Star Wars cocktails, if you drank a gallon of blue milk, tell us about it. Send us pictures. We want to get all of that stuff. You can do that on our Instagram and Twitter. It's at Drink the Movies and on Facebook.com slash Drink the Movies. If you want to see pictures of ours, uh, pictures of my Ewok village that I overpaid for. Um, you know, pictures of the cocktails we made, recipes, all that stuff. You can do that on our website, which is www.drinkthemovies.com. Uh, so go there and check that out and make sure you get subscribed because we've got a lot of fun stuff coming. Michaela, where can our listeners get subscribed to make sure they are staying up with Drink the Movies? You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Good Pods, Near Pods, anywhere where, uh, I guess, Spotify podcasts are distributed now. Um, if you're uh, listening to us now, uh, I have a feeling that there's a subscribe button uh, on your phone. You can just press that little button and you'll get two drops a week from us. We do our lobby bars on Tuesdays. We generally do our deeper dives uh, like like the one you're listening to right now uh, on Thursdays. Um, and then, of course, we have our Patreon site. You can find us uh, there. We do uh, lo lots of cool extra content over there. Um, but uh, if you like what you're hearing uh, on this podcast, leave us a five-star review. Tell your friends. Uh, help us uh, keep the Drink the Movies community growing. Uh, it really helps us out, and uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, go to that. Make sure you get subscribed because next week we're going to be talking about another final installment. Maybe. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if any of the Marvel stuff really has a final, final installment, but Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about next week. So uh, you're going to make sure you get tuned in for that. We have another... We're going to be at the movies uh, two weeks in a row, Michaela. That will be that'll be great. We're going to come up with a really fun cocktail for that. Might have some fun bonus cocktails from our local theater if they get some fun stuff put out. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I don't know, Michaela, I need to go rest up um, because my wallet has taken a pounding here. Uh, May the 4th every year. May the 4th uh, is it's a more and more expensive uh, proposition. But I got my Lego ordered. I got a couple figures ordered. I'm good to go. And I'm going to go uh, carry on. I'm going to watch Visions today. That's releasing on Disney Plus, the new Star Wars stuff so uh yeah let us know what you're getting up to for may the 4th and uh we're gonna head off probably gonna have another yub nub or two michaela i'll mix you one up and we'll talk to everyone next time on drink drink the movies, the movies. may the force be with you michaela may the force be with you always